Warning! To experience the 3D audio contained within this video, you must wear a pair of simple stereo headphones. You have been warned. In the mid to late 90s, as hardware 3D graphics cards were establishing themselves as an essential component of a modern gaming PC, a number of companies brought hardware accelerated 3D audio to the consumer. It was really only with us for a few short years in the grand scheme of things, but despite the age of the technology, the results remain pretty amazing to this day. <laughs> As with the 3D accelerator market of that time, with its clusterfuck of competing APIs and compatibility and performance issues, hardware accelerated 3D audio is a uniquely awesome but fucking ridiculously flaky and convoluted period of gaming history. However, it did bring us some real gems and some fascinating technological cul-de-sacs. In the case of Oriel's A3D at least, it remained arguably the most technologically advanced 3D audio tech around until the PS5 arrived just a couple of years ago. It's also tricky and sometimes impossible to get a lot of this stuff working on a modern PC, and so quite a bit of this tech is just lost to time. Unless, of course, you're completely mental like me and you have a small selection of retro PCs and sound cards with which to fuck around. So, join me on a quest into the magical world of 3D audio. In games development, graphics have always been seen as more important than sound. The game developers spend more time on new features and effects for 3D graphics, and less on high quality sound. However, for a brief period of time, at least in the mid 90s up until the mid 2000s or thereabouts, there was an increased emphasis on audio. So, 3D audio. What is it? The concept of 3D sound means that sound sources are located in the 3D space around the listener, of course. Each sound source represents an object in a virtual game world able to produce sound. What is it? 
3D sounds used for deeper immersion into the game's virtual world. Various technologies are used to emulate or hyperbolize sound behavior in the real world. For example, reverberation, reflected sounds, occlusions, obstructions, remote modeling, and many other effects. What is it? Going way back to 1993, there's actually an example of 3D audio used in Doom, known as 2D panning. So basically every mono sound source is played as stereo, and their positioning can be altered with the left or right channel's volume level. Such a system has no vertical positioning at all, but it's possible to change the sound a bit, for example by filtering high frequencies when it comes from behind the listener, and make it sound muffled, basically, thus emulating the sensation that there's someone about to shoot you in the ass. It's quite primitive, but it does actually work quite well. Moving further ahead, manufacturers were looking to bring a much expanded version of 3D audio to consumers. In 97 to 98, every 3D audio chip maker decided upon the technologies they considered to be promising. What's amazing about all this 3D sound business is that it's created not by an Atmos setup with 55,000 speakers dotted around your living room, but by a simple pair of stereo headphones. Or stereo speakers, actually, but it doesn't work nearly as well. But how can this be? Well, a sound card can emulate the position of a sound source with the HRTF head-related transfer function on two speakers or headphones. Filtering and other transformations emulate the human auditory sensation. What is it? HRTF is a transfer function which models sound perception with two ears to determine positions of the sources in space. What is it? Our head and body are actually obstacles modifying the sound and our ears hidden from the sound source perceive sound signals in an altered manner. Then the signals proceed to our head to be decoded in order to determine the right position of the sound source in space. What is it? Right, so in principle, most of us only have two ears, yeah? But we can hear things coming from all around us. Therefore, there must be a way to do this using two headphones. Oh, a magic doll! Well, why didn't you say? In the right hands, 3D audio through a pair of simple stereo headphones is uncannily accurate and totally amazing. So what about the APIs themselves? Let's start with Direct Sound. Direct Sound 3D is an extension to Direct Sound introduced with DirectX 3 in 1996 with the intention to standardize 3D audio in Windows. It gave us basic 3D sound in games and it formed the base layer of Environmental Audio Extensions or EAX, one of the big standards. This was the one favoured by the mighty Creative and put to use by many of their Sound Blaster sound cards. Blaster Live and four-point surround speakers for your PC. Basically, EAX is an extension to Direct Sound, which provides sound effects processing to the hardware accelerated buffers. Basically, it gave us tons and tons of reverb. The spec was finalized in 98, it continued on for many years, and by the mid-2000s the results were pretty awesome, actually. Okay, have a listen.
Okay, we're going to move on now to A3D. Unlike EAX, A3D was in fact its own distinct API and it was quite a bit more advanced. A3D was developed by Aureal Semiconductor Inc, an American electronics manufacturer best known throughout the mid to late 90s for their PC sound card tech, including A3D and the Aureal Vortex. A3D1 used head-related transfer functions to simulate the effects of a sound wave travelling into the ear and modifies that sound wave to make it sound as if it's coming from a specific location. A3D2 is where it gets really interesting. It builds on that basic concept by adding in wave tracing to simulate the effect of a sound wave travelling through a three-dimensional environment all done using the actual 3D geometry of the room from the game's engine itself. This primarily means reflections off walls, occlusions by walls, a Doppler effect, acoustic reverberation, and atmospheric absorption. As a result, the sound becomes much more realistic. The combination of the 3D sound, the acoustics of the rooms, an environment and accurate representation of audio signals to the listener. The environment modeling realized by Aureal had no equals at that time, even compared to the mighty creative and their EAX tech. A3D was supported by many software titles of the late 90s, including Half-Life, Unreal, Quake 2, Thief, Jedi Knight, Sin, Quake 3 Arena, Unreal Tournament, and the all-time classic that is Star Trek Voyager Elite Force. So A3D had some quite fantastic features for its time, and they remained unique up until just a couple of years ago, really, when it comes to gaming at least. Many of these features are demonstrated in this awesome demo CD that came with my Turtle Beach Montego 2 sound card carrying the Vortex 2 chip itself. Have a listen to these, they're cool as fuck.
But what about the actual games that made use of this stuff? Well, there are quite a lot of A3D1 games, actually, but where things get really technically impressive is with A3D2, a year or so later, and its fancy wave-tracing stuff. Unfortunately, there aren't that many examples of them, because it was kind of nipped in the bud a little bit. More on that later. Anyway, Half-Life and Heretic 2, at least, have fully featured wave-tracing features. Thief is probably the most impressive example of A3D that I can think of. Descent 3 also has A3D2 support, as does Rally Championship 2000, and quite a few others. Prisoner 327 is given. You have entered a restricted area. So those two are the big guns, and they went toe-to-toe -to -toe for a number of years. There was, however, a third way, known as Sensora. This one wasn't a discrete API, it's sort of a transliteration of direct sound, bringing its own unique flavour to it. It supports piggybacking, if you will, off the A3D2 game geometry stuff, and replaces the wave tracing with chaotic wave tracing. How cool does that sound? By all accounts, it sounds pretty awesome in Half-Life, but I can't for the life of me get the fucking thing working, unfortunately, so you might have to try it out for yourselves. A good Sensora card, by the way, would be a Turtle Beach Santa Cruz, which are quite cheap off eBay, you can get them for about 20 quid. PCI sound card works very nicely by all accounts. There were Sensora-only effects, such as zoom effects, simulating a crowd or more spread-out sound field that were superior to A3D, at least on paper. And also there were near-head effects, called macro effects, which simulated things very close to your head, and both of them, by all accounts, were very excellently well done. I don't have as much experience with Sensora as I do with the other two standards, but I do have some examples for you, so give them a listen. Again, put your headphones on. Welcome, young Garrett. In the nearby rooms, I will instruct you in the various skills you will need to survive. Please stay in the entrance area to each room while I explain the room's purpose. When you are ready to begin your lessons, proceed down this hallway to the first room. You must learn how to move unseen. Stay in the shadows. Avoid the light. The indicator on your screen will tell you how visible you are. Try to reach the top of the platform without being seen.
chance and you approach. Open this door to continue. When the door is near the center of your screen, it will light up, indicating that it is selected. To manipulate selected doors and other objects, use them. Good. Proceed down this corridor for your next test. Now you must learn to move quietly. Some surfaces are louder than others when walked upon, and moving quickly makes more noise than moving slowly. Listen to your own footsteps to hear how much noise you are making. The instructor will have his back turned. You must get to the top of the platform without being heard. I could hear that. Try again. Remember, walk on quiet surfaces and move slowly. Very good. I did not hear you traverse the room. Beyond this door is a hallway that will lead you to your next task. Now get your weapons. To pick up objects, select them by centering them on screen until they light up. Then use them. Choose your weapon now. Try readying your sword and then your bow. You can always put them away again if you need your hands free. Now let's go out to the courtyard for some target practice. Some pretty cool stuff. Anyway, amidst this 3D sound arms race, Creative and Aureal were duking it out in court. On March 5th, 98, Creative Labs sued Aureal for patent infringement. Aureal countersued because they believed Creative was guilty of patent infringement. After numerous lawsuits, Aureal won a favourable ruling in December 99, which vindicated Aureal from these patent infringement claims, but the legal costs were too high, and Aureal filed for bankruptcy, unfortunately. On September 21st, 2000, Creative acquired Aureal's assets. This purchase effectively eliminated Creative's only competition in the gaming audio market. And so EAX really takes over at this point. It's sad that we didn't really get to see what Aureal would come up with next, but at least we did get some fantastic EAX games well into the 2000s. I'm going to shut up now finally and let you enjoy some captured footage of some of those later Windows XP EAX games so you can just sit there and drink in the reverb. Got trouble. I spotted a seeker coming our way. Look, there's no reason for me to drag a trainee into a firefight. Why don't you try to slip out before I start shooting? Sounds like a good way to become a target. Not if you're careful. Just stick to the shadows, crouch and move slowly. You'll come through just fine. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Don't be ridiculous. We can handle one order, seeker. Those are pretty big words for a rookie. Go ahead, you first. I'll bring up the rear. Warning, autonomous security systems have been compromised. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Intruders oh. storming the facility. Evacuate right immediately. <sighs> Autonomous security systems have been compromised. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Intruders are storming the facility. Evacuate immediately. Lucky shot. It'll take more than that. This is 
not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Intruders are storming the facility. Evacuate immediately.
Pretty cool stuff, eh? Some absolutely amazing soundscapes in some of those later EAX games, in my opinion. But unfortunately, a lot of this stuff was lost when we moved to Windows Vista. Yes, it's possible to get a lot of this stuff back on a modern PC using the likes of DSOL and OpenAL, etc, etc. But it's a big, big fiddle. And it also isn't quite complete even now. If you want to just play these games and have them work with your EAX or A3D2 audio, you still need original hardware, in my opinion. So, what have we learned? Well, fuck all, really, is the answer. But I will say that this era of hardware-accelerated 3D sound is one of the primary reasons why 90s PC stuff still captures my imagination to this day. It's unique technological cul-de-sacs like the Aureal Vortex 2, the difficulty in obtaining the hardware in the first place, its largely untapped potential, and its awesome and immersive features that still haven't fully been emulated on modern hardware, that keeps me coming back to these monolithic beige monsters time and time again. The list of EAX and A3D games is pretty vast, actually, and I have only played a fraction of them. If any of this stuff interests you, you should get yourself an old PC and a cheap Sound Blaster Live or something like that, and go forth into this largely unexplored frontier land of 3D audio and have yourself some fun. And by all means, let me know the results of this little recce. What are your favourite 3D audio games? Please let me know in the comments below, and please, please remember... What is it?